10 flip targets for Ohio State. Let's talk about them. Welcome into the Voice of College Football Ohio State channel. Today, we are talking some recruiting, talking about some flip targets that Ohio State is going after. Please do remember to like and subscribe. We would definitely appreciate that. And also, if you want more Ohio State content, you can go read my stuff over at Scarlet in Game. Dot com. I do stuff over there, and I also appear on a Sunday night episode over at the OHIO podcast. You can check out that show at 8 o'clock Eastern Time, every 8, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, every Sunday night. I'm there talking about the game, recapping them, and I'd love to see you there. All right, let's go ahead and talk about these flip targets. So Ohio State is on a mission right now to get to the number one class, and although they have a pretty big class already. They do need to find a few more guys to fill it out. Now, they could go with some players they haven't offered yet, and that's definitely possible. Or they could start looking at some players maybe they have previous relationships with or maybe coaches have relationships with from somewhere else that are committed elsewhere. And it looks like that is what they are trying to do. They are trying to go to different players who are committed elsewhere and trying to bring them into the Ohio State class. Ohio State's not really been known for flipping recruits a ton, but that definitely seems like something they are trying to change this year. They are talking to flip candidates and I can say that almost every not almost actually every almost every I should say almost every single player in this 10 group that I'm talking to you about Ohio State has been in contact with recently there is one or two players and we'll get to them when we get there that Ohio State has not been in contact with but they are definitely thinking about them and their names have been mentioned in the Woody so let's talk about those 10 players player number one is Anthony Rogers the Alabama commit look Ohio State still wants a third running back and so they're actually going after two running backs right now the first one being Anthony Turbo Rogers the Alabama commit from Montgomery Alabama in the 24-7 composite he's number 117 the number six running back in the nation and the number nine player in Alabama uh, turbo is supposed to be coming for a visit at some point they have not locked down when that visit is but he is working on coming up for a visit and you can look at probably either the Iowa game or the Nebraska game those are kind of the two weekends right now that they are looking at to bring somebody like turbo in However, if something like that can't work out, you always have the game against that team up north, which is a huge game, and recruits are begging to come for a game like that. So that is always kind of your fallback option if you don't see Turbo or you don't hear about Turbo coming to either the Iowa or the Nebraska game, look for him to possibly be at the game against the team up north. And whenever a player is coming on a visit, you always think, okay, there is some kind of possibility here. And I know for a fact that Coach Lachlan, Coach Locke has been trying to get Turbo on a visit, trying to nail down that time. So it's just about getting that nailed down and getting him on campus. The second running back is Marquise Davis. Very familiar name right? He committed to Kentucky from Cleveland, Ohio. The 24-7 composite has him nationally at 163, the number 10 running back in the nation, and the number seven player in the state of Ohio. Now, Carlos Lachlan went and visited Marquise Davis on the bye week, went up to his school, visited him there, got to talk to him, and Locke is really just attempting to to try and continue to build this relationship. This was one of the things that Locke had going against him, uh, coming in as the new running back coach here at Ohio State, he knew Bo Jackson and he knew some other guys that uh, were out there, but he did not have a great relationship with Marquise Davis. And this is somebody that the Ohio State staff likes and wants Coach Clock to be getting uh, a, a better relationship with. And Coach Clock himself likes him as well. He just didn't have a great relationship when he came in. So instead of Marquise Davis waiting out, he honored when he wanted to, you know, commit and do that stuff. And everybody thought he was going to that team up north. Turns out he was going to Kentucky. And now Kentucky has two players that Ohio State is trying to flip. That other player just so happens to be a wide receiver in the name of Preston Bowman. Our third player we're talking about is Preston Bowman. He is from Pickerington, Ohio, kind of a uh, local celebrity in local Ohio. He is. Uh, he doesn't have great recruiting numbers nationally in the 24-7 composite. He's number 984, the number 152 wide receiver, and the number one, 41 player in the state of Ohio. 
But that's not stopping the Buckeyes from talking to Preston Bowman. They like what he brings to the table. They like that not only is he an outside receiver that somebody can line up in the slot and do some of that stuff, but he is also somebody that carries the ball as well. And as we know, this is somebody that Ryan Day has liked to utilize in his offense. Now, we haven't seen a ton of it this season, especially with Quinshawn Judkins and Travion Henderson, but we saw it a lot with Jackson Smith and Jigba. We saw it a lot with Xavier Johnson. And to a certain extent, we also saw it a little bit with Emeka Buka. Uh, there for a time when Jackson Smith and Jigba was out. So this is somebody that has a skill set that Ohio State and Ryan Day like to use. He is supposed to take an official visit at some point this season. They just aren't sure when, and the Buckeyes have been working on trying to get that right. This is a very similar situation to Anthony Turbo Rogers. Watch for the Iowa game, watch for the Nebraska game, and of course, as always, be looking for that game against that team up north. It's really hard to say why he hasn't committed yet. I, I feel like at some point Preston Bowman will commit to Ohio State. He will flip. I feel like this is, you know, should be the most likely one. This is one of the reasons why I didn't do this as like a ranking, the top 10 guys, because on paper, Preston Bowman makes complete sense to flip to Ohio State. However, he hasn't done it yet. So I don't know if he's just waiting for that official visit or what the thought process is there, but this seems like somebody uh, Ohio State should be able to, to land. Oh boy. All right. Three offensive linemen that Ohio State is going to be going after or, or, or they are going after right now. Uh, number one, Micah DeBose, Alabama commit from Mobile, Alabama, the number 137 national player, number 14 offensive lineman, number 11 player in the state of Alabama. I was the first one to mention him to you guys. I kind of just mentioned him briefly. And then of course, right after that, Tavian St. Clair got in there and uh, mentioned that he was still trying to recruit him. And then Berm comes out and talks about him. And then everybody starts talking about him after that. Well, I'm glad he got his name out there because Ohio State really wants Micah DeBose. The problem is, is that Alabama also really wants him. Now, the rumor is, this has not been confirmed yet, but the rumor is that Alabama increased their NIL for Micah DeBose when they found out Micah DeBose was talking with Ohio State. Uh, one thing that I, I know for certain is that Ohio State is trying to flip Micah DeBose. However, uh, Kalen DeBoer is considering Micah DeBose a must keep on their recruiting class even though he's outside the top 100 he doesn't have the highest ranking of maybe some other players in that class he is a must keep Kalen DeBoer in this staff especially with the offensive line and what they are trying to build there another offensive lineman they are going after is Avery Gatch the Michigan commit out of Franklin Michigan 24-7 composite number 246 nationally Number 13 offensive lineman and the number two player in the state of Michigan. Avery Gatch is somebody that Justin Fry has, you know, he's really enjoyed. He's really liked. He thought he's a good player. However, Avery was always kind of partial to Michigan. And so he committed there. However, there is thought inside the Woody that Gatch, even though he's locked in with Michigan, if there is some kind of thing, some kind of big penalty that happens with Michigan that would make Gatch no longer want to be there. Ohio State wants to be that next best option for him to say, you know, I don't want to go to this team, but the next best option is Ohio State. And so Ohio State is just trying to keep communication open, trying to stay in touch with him because it they, they don't know what this punishment from the NCAA is going to be yet. And that punishment is going to come right before signing day. And so the thought process is if this punishment comes down right before signing day, Gatch could panic he could say no way i'm not going to uh you know somebody that can't go to a bowl game for three years or yada 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 whatever that might be or just lost their head coach whatever i mean that's the kind of stuff we're talking about that would be a big enough penalty for avery gash to possibly not go to that team up north we'll see uh, a lot of different rumors of stuff like that going on out there with the ncaa and penalties and at the end of the day i'm just like let's just see what happens when it happens right i don't even know if the ncaa is going to be around in a couple of years so who knows how it's going to work out and how that's going to happen, but we will see. All right, the third offensive lineman is uh, Damola Ajibahan. Ajid Dahan. He is from Duluth, Georgia, the number 230 uh, national player, the number 25 offensive lineman, and the number 35 player in the state of Georgia. Uh, Damola is a, he's a good player, but the rumor with him is that he wants a lot of NIL. Now, don't let this shape your perception of him. So 
you have to understand this is very very common for players who just recently get offered by ohio state or just recently got interest from them they see ohio state and it's not just them i mean a lot of recruits do unless unless they have figured out how the ohio state coaches operate a lot of recruits see ohio state as just this big cash cow right i mean you got the 20 million dollars number the 20 million dollars number roaming around you got all this talk about how ohio state's buying players all this stuff and so obviously in a recruit's mind they're gonna think oh this is the place where i can go and get paid and so they come in typically with higher expectations uh and then if they are somebody that it's not all about nil they they get educated and they learn oh okay so they're gonna make me a fair offer they might be my biggest offer but they're not going to be over extravagant and go, you know, just blast everybody out of the park and make it this unbeatable offer. That's just not how Ohio State operates. And that's one of the reasons why Ohio State can pay so many players on their roster the way that they do. This recruitment, in my mind, if it does go Ohio State's way, would go down to signing day. Just because Justin Fry is getting in the, into this late enough and trying to figure things out and also georgia is involved in well this isn't just ohio state versus georgia tech georgia is involved in this one they're going to make it hard on justin fry and ohio state to get their guy so look for this one to be a drawn out one uh hopefully they'll get him on campus for a game at some point and uh, make that make that a good thing but uh and hopefully these rumors about the nil hopefully it's just what i said it's, it's the common misconception that ohio state's just some cash cow and we'll see we'll see what happens all right two defensive linemen and two cornerbacks and then we are done with our 10 the first defensive lineman we're going to talk about kind of a hybrid so i guess you could say linebacker type of thing as well but you know him uh you know he's he was the biggest loss for the buckeyes this year uh, it's justin hill the alabama commit from cincinnati ohio 24 7 composite number 55 player nationally the number five edge the number four player in the state of ohio in my opinion this was the worst l that ohio state took this summer um this was the worst possible thing that could have happened uh not, not the worst possible thing but this was the worst thing that happened for ohio state this summer the buckeyes want him bad i mean this is a player that the buckeyes really really want the problem is, is just with his position and how they're trying to formulate this, it's still rather confusing. I can't speak for Justin Hill, but I know if I were the recruit, I would be confused by the way it sounds like things are going still. And so, I mean, he's talking to multiple coaches, which normally is a very good thing, right? You're talking to multiple coaches and you get that uh, multiple guys in there saying, hey, we want you. Hey, you know, come in here. How you doing? And, and trying to form a relationship with you. But it still just kind of makes the player confused. Again, not speaking directly for Justin Hill. I don't know that he's actually confused, but it would definitely make me confused from knowing what I know about the situation. Um, it just it, it seems like this is a recruitment that Ohio State still is not completely sure on what to do. And they're still trying to develop this. As far as I can say, you got to figure out what you're going to do quick. That's the only way you're going to get Justin Hill to flip to Ohio State. I'm not putting Justin Hill in the 10 here of viable flip targets because I think that Ohio State's doing a great job. I just know Ohio State wants him really, really bad. And so if they want him that bad, they're going to go after him. The problem is, is that they just aren't. I don't think they have the best, I don't want to say effort, they have the best strategy of going after him right now. So hopefully they can develop that, hopefully they can fix that, but you know they also have very important football games going on right now, so it's hard to figure that out exactly. The other defensive line flip target, which I just kind of roll my eyes when people talk about him, but I know Ohio State wants him, and Ohio State has been in communication with him, so I will mention him. He is Malik Autry, the Auburn commit from uh, Opelika, Alabama, the national 108th player, 13th defensive lineman, and 7th player in the state of Alabama. Look, does Malik Autry, is Malik Autry impressed with Ohio State? Of course. Does Malik Autry seriously consider Ohio State? Of course. However, Malik Autry does not leave Alabama. Him and his family do not leave Alabama very well. Um, uh, Mark Givler just talked about this the other day. I think it was last Monday on his Cole Session Recruiting Podcast, and he put it very, very well to where, in his mind, if Malik Autry ever did decommit from Auburn, 
he'd just go straight to Alabama because the state of Alabama is what his family knows. It's what's close to them. It's what, and, and many families are this way, right? I mean, the state of Ohio is all my family. Every, well, that's all my mom ever knew. My dad moved over from the state of Indiana, but this is for the most part what their family knew, right? And so at the end of the day, it's, it's hard to flip a player like that. And this is not common for players, but sometimes this is just the world of defensive linemen and offensive linemen recruiting. I'm not going to be one of those guys that calls them, you know, big mama's boys or anything like that. But just if you look at the numbers, offensive linemen and defensive linemen stay home. They tend to stay home more often. I know Ohio State wants to get another uh, defensive lineman in this class. And honestly, at this point, if I had to predict who it was going to be, it'd probably be Chaz Coleman. I think that's probably who they're going to go for. I think they're probably going to offer him and they're probably going to get him in this class. Now, do I think that that means Justin Hill and Malik Autry would be completely out? No, these are both kind of players that you just keep in communication with. And if the door ever opens, you try to get those guys in the class because they're that good. Uh, all right, two more, the cornerbacks. Cornerback number one, you know him. Everybody always talks about him. Uh, Dorian Brew. Dorian Brew from Conroe, Texas. He also has some uh, connections to Ohio, obviously. Move from there. The number 39 player nationally, number five cornerback, and the number seven player in the state of Texas. Ohio State still wants a third cornerback. I know that I put this out on Twitter months ago, and I immediately got met with, no, they're fine. They have Neem offered, and they have uh, Devin Sanchez. It's like, yeah, those guys are great, but those are two guys. They want three. Uh, I don't care how talented somebody is. They can't play two positions. They can't be two people. Uh, Devin Sanchez and Neem Offert are fantastic. These are two of the best cornerbacks that uh, – probably the best combo of cornerbacks that Ohio State will ever get, uh, at the very least committed. I think Neem Offert uh, six with Ohio State, and it's probably going to be the best duo of cornerbacks that Ohio State ever gets in a recruiting class. They're just – they're fantastic. However – it's no slight to them to say Ohio State wants a third cornerback because at the end of the day, Ohio State needs three for the numbers. They want three guys in this class. They want uh, a deep secondary. They play five defensive backs, and they want guys who are able to kind of rotate and go to different positions. So Ohio State wants a third cornerback, and they feel like this relationship with Dorian Brute is still strong. They feel like there's still good connection there. They feel like there's still a good relationship there. And if we're just being honest, sorry, Duck fans, if you're watching this, but Oregon is susceptible to flips. Oregon is one of those schools that they are going to get a bunch of players, but they are, they are always going to be susceptible to flips. There are some programs out there that love to flip guys, and there's some programs out there that can be susceptible to flips just because of, I don't know if it's the way they recruit them or their location or what it is, but Oregon is one of those places that can be susceptible to flips. I'm not saying again duck fans i'm not saying they're gonna you know lose three different guys in this class or anything like that i'm just saying oregon is a team in my mind who has had players flip from them uh and, and it can happen a bit more frequently than other teams all right i'll stop making the duck fans mad for a minute if they're watching this last guy cornerback Jameer Scott. He is a Wisconsin commit out of Cincinnati, Ohio. He is the number 319 player in the nation, the number 13 athlete. That's how 24-7 uh, has him, athlete. And then the number 11 player in the state of Ohio. Ohio State is recruiting him as a cornerback. Uh, in my mind, the way this is working, if Brew doesn't work out, look for them to offer Scott. Now, Scott does not have an offer from Ohio State currently, and I think that if an offer came to Scott, he would flip. I don't know if it's a, well, I know it's not a, as for sure of a thing as Jake Cook, right? But I think that he would definitely be very happy with an offer and that flip would come. So I don't think you offer him like a week before signing day. I think you have to offer him sooner than that and kind of pledge to him that because at the end of the day, I think an offer to Scott to me would signify they're raising the white flag on Dorian Brew. They're saying, look, Dorian Brew, uh, it's not going to happen. And we need a third guy in this class. And so rather than keep trying and gambling with Dorian Brew, we're just going to throw our hands up in the air and say, we'll take Scott. It's not that they don't like Scott. I mean, they, they really like Scott. I think from what I've been told, they really like Scott. It's just they really like Dorian Brew too. I mean, that would be three players at the same position group in the top 40. Like, are you kidding me? If you could get Dorian Brew, are you kidding me? That would be fantastic. Um, I, I think Scott is probably who they'll go with here in the end. Uh, they do have a good number of safeties, and Deshaun Stewart could 
uh, kind of be that third cornerback pseudo for him at the end of the day if things don't work out. But I think they're going to get three, and I think Scott is probably going to be the guy unless something changes with Dorian Brew. Uh, I think they're probably going to eventually end up offering Scott and uh, hoping that he will flip from Wisconsin to Ohio State. All right, guys, that's uh, that's what I got for you. To me, the most likely places to look for additions is going to be one player at running back, one to two players at the offensive line, one defensive lineman, and one or two defensive backs. I think Ohio State would definitely take another defensive back if they can. Uh, it, it, or, or, I shouldn't say if they can. If something happens with Eam Offered, I definitely think they would go even harder at Dorian Brew, and that would help them out because of the reasons that Dorian Brew didn't commit to Ohio State with Devin Sanchez and Neem Offered there. And so if Neem Offered moved on, you could see a possibility of both Brew and Scott coming into this class and flipping. We'll see. It just kind of depends. I mean, all of this stuff, you know, it's kind of flexible. It's kind of going. So you could ask me a week from now, hey, what, what are your 10 most viable guys and it could be different than what it is now i'm just doing the best i can with the information i got thanks guys for watching come check me out over on the big 10 huddle we have big 10 content over there saturday night sunday night and tuesday night as well come check me out over there on the big 10 huddle and basketball episodes on thursday now instead of the football episodes on thursday we're going to be switching that up so thanks everybody for watching i do appreciate it and uh, we'll see you next time have a good one.